Barrett, and I'm uh, joined by several officials from our Milwaukee Health Department who will be addressing you as well. The H1N1 virus has been at the forefront of the minds of parents, employers, and residents since reports of infection in the U.S. first surfaced this spring. As mayor, I want to assure the city of Milwaukee, the residents of the city of Milwaukee, that we are proactive in our efforts to limit the effects this illness could have on our community and on our local economy. Today, the Milwaukee Health Department begins and has begun administering the vaccine to city of Milwaukee residents in an effort to curb the spread of disease throughout the community. This H1N1 flu vaccine will be provided free of charge and on a voluntary first come first serve basis. Although we will eventually provide vaccinations for all residents to the extent that we can, and we're expecting well over 100,000 vaccinations, the doses we are providing at our first public clinic are mainly of the nasal spray variety, which are for healthy people between ages 2 and 49 and who do not have underlying chronic health medical conditions. The health department is strongly recommending that healthy persons aged 2 to 24 get the vaccine to reduce influenza transmission in K-12 school and college settings. In addition, healthy people aged 2 to 49 years who are either healthcare workers or, or who live with or care for infants less than six months of age should also get vaccinated now. When more doses of the injectable H1N1 flu vaccine are available, the health department will be able to provide vaccination to those at high risk of complications of flu who cannot get the nasal vaccine, like pregnant women and those with underlying or chronic medical conditions. Although my understanding is that today at our site we started with 300 of those injectable uh, vaccinations and we still have some remaining, but Commissioner Baker can talk about that. It is important to stress that the H1N1 vaccines are made the same way as the regular seasonal flu vaccine and like the seasonal flu vaccine are very safe and effective. I know there have been some concerns about that. We believe quite strongly that, that we don't have to worry about that. As with the seasonal flu vaccine, H1N1 vaccines have been tested and have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Once the city's vaccine supply is ample and those who are at high risk for being served, those of us who don't fall into those special categories um, should step forward. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn over to Commissioner Baker who will give you an update of where we are today here at Sarah Scott um, in terms of the number of vaccines that we have already distributed and the number of vaccines that we have available for the rest of the day and tomorrow as well at the supply labs. Commissioner Baker. Thank you, Mayor Barrett. Um, as Mayor Barrett said, um, we will continue to administer and uh, dispense a vaccine as long as it's available today. Um, as of this morning, uh, we've had approximately 800 individuals come through our doors. Um, we have roughly 100 or so individuals who are waiting. We've expanded our capacity in our waiting area given the inclement weather, and uh, we're moving folks through quite, uh, quite swiftly. Um, we have roughly uh, 6,500 uh, intranasal vaccine. Uh, we've administered, as of this morning, roughly 220 of those uh, intranasal vaccines and roughly 120 of the injectables. Uh, while we had a limited supply of injectables, we do think that uh, that supply will be depleted uh, very shortly, but with roughly 6,000 of the intranasal left, those 2 to 49 who meet the criteria uh, in that, uh, that we're targeting uh, still should come. Uh, we will determine uh, later today whether or not we have the capacity to stand up additional clinics this weekend, and we will do so until we've dispensed every uh, uh, bit of vaccine that we have. Um, we currently have about 14 lines running uh, uh, simultaneously. We have the capacity to expand to 24 lines. And as we see flow come in and as volume and demand increases, we will expand in, in, in double-digit uh, fraction up to 24, about two additional lines, uh, and staff will make that determination. Uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, make mention of is that, um, again, in terms of uh, the safety and efficacy of this vaccine. It is safe. I've taken the vaccine. I plan to have my family take the vaccine. Uh, we in public health are pleased with the demand. We do know that there are some challenges in the federal uh, distribution of uh, injectables and, and the overall distribution of vaccine. But today is evidence that the uh, community understands that the best case 
and the best weapon we have against H1N1 or any other influenza for that matter is a vaccine. And we in public health are pleased to see that there's high demand. We hope to meet that demand. In the coming weeks, as our public health allotment of vaccine uh, comes forward, we will stand up additional public clinics. Uh, lastly, I, I wanted to uh, make mention that uh, this is the first of a series of uh, clinics in, uh, in, in Milwaukee. Uh, and we will uh, take individuals who meet the criteria. We will not turn individuals away who meet the criteria. So individuals who get here, you're eligible for the vaccine, we have it, we will give it to you today. Um, and with that being said, I'll turn it back over to Mayor Barrett, we may entertain some questions. Um, actually, perhaps Commissioner Baker may be better suited to answer. Just the health department on Tuesday uh, said that the focus would be on those in the at-risk categories and suggested that you were anticipating this additional shipment of vaccine really at, at any moment. It, didn't arrive, obviously. Was there misinformation? Do you feel you were misled in, in uh, believing that that vaccine was going to be coming soon? I, I, I think misled is a, certainly a strong term to use. Uh, uh, we anticipated it. We ordered our allotment. We expected much more vaccine to be on the ground. Federal government had hoped by October 15 to have 120 million doses on the ground. We have roughly 13 million doses is on the ground. And we were a part of the federal strategy and the federal uh, uh, difficulty in getting that vaccine on the ground. So while Milwaukee was impacted by some of the distribution concerns, I don't think we were targeted in, in terms of those distribution concerns. Um, what we have done today is to take vaccine, which was a part of our allotment for healthcare workers, and, and, and medical workers and say, we're not gonna keep that on the shelf. We're gonna dispense that vaccine to the public. The public demands it, we'll dispense it. So our 7,000 doses were to, so, supposed to have gone to healthcare workers. There wasn't the great uptake that we thought there would have been, and therefore we're putting it out. We're meeting consumer demand. So uh, I, I know there are challenges and I know that there's concern. There will be enough vaccine available, but we in the public health community are saying, this is good. People understand that this is your best protection. We will get through this, and we will get every uh, uh, individual who wants the vaccine and is eligible for it, that vaccine. It just may take some time. Have you gotten a sense of when that vaccine could arrive? Well, what we've been told is the first of November. Uh, however, uh, given what's happening regionally and nationally, uh, I, I would suspect that the federal government is moving uh, in, in, in quick fashion to uh, move that uh, arrival date of vaccine from the first of November uh, uh, to earlier times. Uh, we anticipate uh, being able to stand up a clinic for 48 hours after receipt of vaccine. So if we get a vaccine on Monday, we'll have another public clinic on Wednesday. We will move very quickly. How concerned are you that you aren't able to take care of the high risk people first? How, how much of a, a public health impact is that going to have? Well, we in the public health community are always concerned about high-risk individuals, but if you if you harken back to the spring, none of us have had access to this vaccine. So those high-risk individuals have been exposed to H1N1, which has been widespread since the spring. Uh, are we troubled by it? Yes. Are, do we have a plan for it, uh, getting it to them as soon as available? Uh, yes, we do. So while I am concerned, uh, I would hope that the same measures that we uh, reported back in the spring, that people talk to their medical provider, stay at home from work or school if they're sick, use good cough and, and hand washing etiquette. That's the best tools one has in absence, uh, absence of, uh, of the vaccine. But we're hopeful that in the coming uh, days and weeks that we will get to those high-risk individuals.